So, Guti, well, thank you for joining me. One of the, probably the most impressive parts of, uh, of you and your story is that you've been involved with um, national team gymnastics or international gymnastics for quite a long time. Yeah, many, many years. And you've developed, along with your colleagues, of course, uh, a system which is unique, I think, to a lot of other clubs and coaches because uh, it's not uncommon for people to have success, maybe in a moment or an instant, with one athlete. But your club in Stuttgart has generated uh, sequential athletes. You've always got people involved with international competition, European Championships, World Championships, Olympic Games. This has been going on for years and years and years and years. So you have a system in place. Can you just talk to me through, I know this is a big question to start with, but can you just talk me through what's involved with that and what's different about that system to another club which just has one coach producing one athlete and that's it? Okay, first I can say I only worked in Stuttgart. I've seen a lot of different gyms, but I cannot compare. I've just worked in this club and it's not a club, it's a... a like a little federation from a part of Germany and we are six coaches in Stuttgart and we try to work as, as a team. We develop everything together. And so for the coaches that are watching or, or listening to this, what's important about um, a legacy? What's important in the terms of the structure of the club to ensure that you can produce over and over again? Okay, we get um, children when they start with gymnastics maybe with six sometimes five years and um, we get them from the region of Stuttgart from different clubs and um, they did maybe they start with gymnastics in Stuttgart but they have their own club where they can go back and where they find um, a place when they quit or when they started gymnastics and then we start with the little ones and from a group of 20 little ones um, some of them do the next step the next step and the next step yeah. and um, when i started doing my coach's career i started always with six-year-old girls i looked for them in the at different places i went to the clubs looked at little children took them with me to Stuttgart um, yep. Kunstform and I, then I started the process and this was maybe from let me think it was it started um, 1997 and uh, in 2015 um, it was the last time I um, had gymnasts which whom I started doing gymnastics okay. in Stuttgart. Then I changed together with Robbie um, to the senior level and now we have a really big group with a lot of seniors and some um, very good juniors. Yeah. So um, maybe it's unique, but it's not unique. I know a lot of coaches who do the same thing. Um, that we have a lot of gymnasts we um, had from the early beginning to the high level gymnastics. So this is a long journey. Yeah. You can um, uh, have a lot of special moments with the gymnasts and you know them very well. You have um, developed them, you develop the good things, but also the bad things. So at the end you can say all what I've done is um, what we did together, yeah. the gymnast and the coach. And um, this is, I think, one of the best things in gymnastics. Now I get gymnasts um, from the system in Germany changed a little bit. They um, create uh, two or three places in Germany where the best athletes should go to train together. Um, it's called Bundesstützpunkte and Stuttgart is one of the Bundesstützpunkte. And um, so the best junior um, and senior gymnasts go there and um, 
we are together a strong group. Yeah. But if you get a gymnast from outside, it's a completely different work. You need a lot of time to um, bring them in your system, to bring them in your mindset. And um, the work is different, not better, not worse, but different. Yeah. So I talk a lot about um, a system being like a jigsaw puzzle. And a what? A, like a puzzle. Okay. Yeah? Uh -huh. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So you have, at Stuttgart, you have your own puzzle, the way that you piece your mm -hmm. gymnasts together. And it's probably been quite similar uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. And you have another club which has the, their own puzzle, mm -hmm. of course. But if you take one of their pieces and you put it into yours, that's where you have the, the difference. You know, yes. that, that piece is not wrong, but it doesn't fit immediately yeah. into your program or your system, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, you um, realize this sometimes later, it's always a little thing, oh, okay, I have to think in a different way, now she's a little bit different, educated. It's normally, it's, and no, at no time, it's the mistake from the gymnast. Okay. And also not from her home coach. Everybody tries to make it perfect. But it's not, um, it doesn't fit for our system. Mm. So we, have, we need more time to bring it together. But yeah. at the end, everything is okay, but it's not so fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're right, every coach is being the best that they know how to be. Nobody's yeah, yeah. trying intentionally to uh, ruin a gymnast's career, of course. And you mentioned before about, I think, accountability, that you said that you have to share and enjoy the good moments, but also take responsibility for the bad moments as well, yes. for that, those parts yes. of the journey. And I know you, we've talked about this a lot in the past, um, that you say, you know, you have to take, accept the highs, but also accept mm -hmm. everything else as well as being part of the journey of the coach, like you've just mentioned, yes. being responsible. Yes, and it's, okay, when we think about gymnastics, we think um, always, okay, how is it possible to teach somebody a double um, salt or double twisting? I don't know what, Yurchenko. Um, this is interesting. It's really interesting. It's the technical part of the thing. But to get a gymnast from <laughs> three steps or a hurdle round off um, to the double twisting Yurchenko, it doesn't take only the knowledge of the technical um, part, but it's, um, it's all about, we have to do this process together. You develop the skill and you develop it together with um, the athlete and then you you see um, there's moments where you have to take not plan B but plan C D or <laughs> X Y Z yeah. so um, you go not the direct way but you have to take these ways and um, it's often the mindset which changes we we have body changes, we have um, other problems and all together is such a long and cool story yeah. and this is my biggest motivation to bring, bring them through all these okay. ups and downs to the skill and I think there are a lot of coaches, they know the better when and how to do something, they have more experience but um, to get to the goal at the end, is, this is exciting. Yeah. So would you say that's more the art of coaching, is to work with the athlete, to, to endure yes. the good and the bad the, times, and yes. to basically, you know, the most important thing is that you finish, yes. isn't it? Is that yes. you get to your destination. Yes, and um, it doesn't make sense if you stay at a moment, you try to get it more technical, you try to get it better and better. At the end, um, this sport is, you have the judge, you have the gymnast, the gymnast has to compete and he has to show, okay, I'm able to do it. But to come to this um, moment, this is um, yeah. the hardest part. But that's the bit that you enjoy. Yeah. yeah. So you almost enjoy the challenges that you're going to be faced because you must have been through so many. I yeah. mean, let's think about the athletes that you have worked with. And I mean, the ones that I know of, of course, you know, the Ellie Seitz, the Kumbui, the, the Tabea, you, know, uh, you know, Michelle Tim, Ellie, Emily Petz. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And mm -hmm. that's just the, mm -hmm. the current girls, not just mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, you've, you must have been through many different scenarios. And in many of these girls, of course, I've just mentioned, you've had, I mean, like Tabea, you had when she was a baby. Yes. You know, and, and that's rare for a coach of your level to actually have taken them from that, that baby age when they first walk in the gym all yeah, the way yeah. through. Yeah. This is really an amazing story. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, every gymnast has his own amazing story. And at the end, I'm always proud of them. I can not feel more, um, I'm, I'm so thankful to have these fabulous persons in the yeah. gym. They are um, not only good gymnasts, they are good humans. Yeah. <laughs> they are, um, they do such a, such a high level and intense sport and um, develop as a person. And at the end, I'm so happy when I see they, they are, um, they have a family, they have a job, they, they love what they do. And this is what makes me yeah, really happy, really happy. And I'm also interested in what they do after their sports career. Mm -hmm. And not only me, all of my colleagues yeah. um, are happy when um, the gymnast can develop and reach his goal. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you started at Stuttgart in 97, is that right? 97, yes. Um, First, I, I was in a little club in um, maybe 60 kilometers from Stuttgart. And I was, um, I studied um, physical education at the university. And um, I want to become a teacher for German and sports physical education and I always worked with gymnasts mm -hmm. to get some money to um, I liked it I like coaching and yeah. um, then I had a group of really good little ones I started with them with five years in a little club it's my city is Tübingen from where I come and they were not so bad <laughs> And I brought them in the, um, it's called Dekada, it's a selection from the region. And um, I was so proud and I don't want to stop and I saw potential in the girls. Yeah. And then I got a, the possibility to work for the Federation and they paid me. So I stopped doing the teacher um way yeah. i um became a part-time coach but they um paid for me the federation paid for me and i thought okay i will do it one year one year not more then i go back and do a normal job proper job <laughs> a proper <laughs> job yes <laughs> and after one year for sure the gymnasts get better uh, and it was the um the generation of um, 89 born girls, it was Kim Bui, Annika Pfeffer, also one of the German national team members. And my own daughter was in the group and a lot of gymnasts in the, which became um, national elite gymnasts. And the Federation was very proud and they, they thought, okay, we can go with these girls and maybe we can build a system. <laughs> And then I met um, Tamara Koklova. She's a former um, Russian coach. A lot of coaches know her very, very well. She had um, gymnasts in the Russian national team with medals at the Olympics. And she got married with another coach from Russia, Anatoly Yamovsky. He worked for Stuttgart years before. Yeah. And I asked her if she can help me um, to develop the girls and sh we started together. Then um, one of these girls or two of these girls got better and better and um, we had our first national team members cool. with national competitions um, and we both developed them. Yeah. So we were proud and it starts to get a system. Um, there was a new generation. I picked them up, brought them into the yeah. um, into the system, and 
um, we develop the older ones and they become um, world team members and Olympic um, team members. Awesome. Really awesome. And the next generation was just in the gym. Yep. And then, okay, we need a no new coach, too many people, <laughs> too many gymnasts. Um, and we asked Robbie, he mm -hmm. was with a man gymnast in the gym and um, asked him to join us and to work with us. And he said, okay, then we were three <laughs> and we built it yep. up. And um, then we had the next generation and in 2008, Olympics 2008, I started again with little ones. It was the generation from Tabea Alt. Yep. And there were nearly five or six little gymnasts which are now in the national team. It was Tabea, Karina, Julia Plattenhardt mm -hmm. was in the team for the juniors. Yep. Then there was Emily Petz with five years in this time. Um, and some other ones which um, quit now and okay and now we have a new a generation, new generation <laughs> which we have yes. here with us this week yes so. which we have here with us but yeah. to be fair these gymnasts are not made from Stuttgart coaches yeah they come from everywhere in mm -hmm. the country because the system changed yeah and um, it's really hard if you have so many high-level gymnasts it's not possible to go down but our coaches company gets bigger yeah. so we have some assistant coaches and we have a new colleague from Italy and um, I think we can handle more gymnasts yeah. but the system is still very familiar everybody um, knows about everything about the other one mm -hmm. they help each other and I think it's a big chance to have 10 year old gymnasts together in a group with uh, nearly oh, 31 30 no, yeah, now yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 but yeah. next year 31 yeah, with year Kim. old very 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 experienced gymnast yeah. everybody can learn from each other so kim sees oh there's little paula she's working like a machine mm -hmm. and then there is kim bui uh, and paula can see if I can um, work like Kim Bui, maybe I can get a national high-level gymnast. Maybe I can reach Olympics like Kim Bui. Not only one time, maybe two times. It's possible. Yeah. So that concept of success breeding success. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think there's nothing worse than when you're the top kid in the gym and you haven't got someone to look up to and to, mm. to push. But in your gym, you know, you've got so many opportunities. Mm. You know, your high athletes are celebrities, mm -hmm. aren't they, within mm -hmm. Germany, not just within mm -hmm. gymnastics, but, you know, Ellie Seitz is a huge celebrity within the country. Mm. And um, that must be huge for the, for the little girls to be able to see and train with her. And yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And um, they, they know it, they feel it. It's, yeah. it's in the gym. And when they come from outside, the parents sometimes, they tell me, oh, she had fear, she, does, she doesn't, it's her, it's her, dream to stay at the Mag Magnesia mm -hmm. and work together with Ellie, the same hands in the, in the same chalk, <laughs> chalk <laughs> pot. It's, it's, um, they like it, they enjoy yeah. it and um, they feel I'm part of it and, and I, I'm proud and I must give everything to, to stay there and to be part of this company. Yeah, yeah, nice. Just coming back to Tamara. How much then, how much does she influence your coaching and your development as a coach yourself? Because I know how pivotal some mm. of my mentors have been. It completely changed my life. Yes. Um, I agree. Tamara also completely changed my life. Yeah. It, it's my personal hero. Mm. Um, I liked her um, way of coaching. She was always calm. She was um, very technical. Um, she had the biggest passion I've ever seen and the longest breath I've ever seen. And what, um, what was very important for me um, when I was younger coach, she exactly knows what to do to um, get the goal in what time. Mm -hmm. This is something you need experience. If you start um, with routines, 
two weeks before competition, you see after the competition it was too late. Yeah. Um, if you break this down to a simple element, when do I have to start with um, Jäger and when is the time that you can bring it into the routine? So each experienced coach will agree it's possible to catch the Jäger maybe in January, yeah. but it's not possible to bring it into the, room if, uh, into the routine if you catch it in January. It's not mm -hmm. possible to do it in the routine in May. Yeah. Not enough time to bring stability in the um, routine with this element. And this is what um, you need somebody who says, okay, calm down. You need time. This is absolutely normal. I had it with this, this, this girl. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, I do it properly. I try to come back to the basics and then, and then you got it. And two months later, she loses the element. Okay, that's normal. Your first flight, learn, you learn it twice. Yeah, okay. Is that what she says? Mm. Is that now what you say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she told it to me and okay, I said, okay, but maybe I can try it again. <laughs> and then, okay, you're right. And she's right. Yes, she was <clears throat> always right. And she was, um, she never cried. <clears throat> she was always calm. And what I love is her, um, it's her creativity. Yep. Um, she was always thinking about new skills and to create something what was mm. very special. And when she came to um, Germany, I asked her what makes, what makes your motivation to um, work with us? And she said, no, it's not. I worked with a lot of talent gymnasts. I was in one of the best systems in the world. We had everything and the gymnasts were amazing. Yeah. But in Germany, you have a different education and you have um, different girls, special girls, tall ones, um, tiny ones, um, not so talented, but hard working mm -hmm. girls. And um, it's interesting for me, as long as it's different from this, what I did, the last 20 years. I think she decides to s never do coaching when she came to um, Germany. But the completely different um, mm -hmm. circumstances were motivation for her. Yeah. And this is what she brought also into the gym. Try to create. She Sometimes she sends me messages today and she said, okay, I show you a cool element and I see a video yeah. and then, okay, maybe we can try it. Yeah. So she's, I mean, you never, you can never leave gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's part she of who we are. She is still part of our company and yeah. um, always with us. She, we have a, mm. off, we call each other very often. So yeah. she's in the process. And when I have questions, I still ask her, still, what can yeah. I do? Um, give me a tip. Mm. I, I often think about, if, if I'm in a, a, a tough situation, mm -hmm. I what, think, which, what would, would they yeah. do? Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would Lucan do? What would yeah. Al Fong do? What would uh -huh. Carol Angela Orchard do? I always think about that. And mm -hmm. sometimes it gives me the clarity yeah, straight yeah. away. Yeah, Because you, you, you step outside your own head. Yeah, yeah. And you say, wow, if Al Fong knew that I was even thinking about this, he would just say, Nick, seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why are you thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the answer is obvious. Exactly. So, uh, sounds to me like... Um, you know, just like many other coaches of your level that I've spoken to, but there's not normally been one pivotal person in their life which yeah. has really guided them. Yeah. Um, not guided them to success, but led them on a path and been a role model, like you said, yeah. your source of inspiration, yeah. your hero. Um, it's been the same for me and many other coaches, and it's why I'm always encouraging new coaches, young coaches, to find that person. Mm. And, and it should normally be not easy, but you'll know when you find the right person. Yeah. They have the experience, they have the willingness to help. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're trying to engage with someone who doesn't want to help you, they're not the right person. Mm. And 
it's one of the reasons I now do what I do. You know, most of my work, as you know, is education, mm -hmm. because because more than one person has guided me and given me uh, incredible opportunities to to learn. So I feel and I enjoy the responsibility of giving that back to other coaches as well. Yes, we have also some young coaches that. And I don't know what they think, but I hope we can help them to develop their dreams and... Um, yep. Well, there's no better experience than being in, a, in an environment like Stuttgart, which can continually produce gymnasts, you know. And uh, let me uh, ask you this. Were you a gymnast before? I don't know the answer to this. Yes. You were? Okay. So did you come from uh, being a gymnast immediately into this no, smaller no, club? Or no, no, no. I had a longer break. Mm. And I um, don't want to get professional coach. Okay. I want to get want to be teacher. A teacher. Yes, and I want to have a family. This was important for me, and I couldn't imagine uh, to have family and coaching everything together. Yeah. But it worked. And you have a big family now, don't you? Yes, so big family. Also involved in gymnastics and yes. different parts of the world. So yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's some of your hardest lessons been in your career? Because it's often our moments that are quite difficult that, or challenging that change us and that change our futures. Mm -hmm. I can certainly think of a few for myself, but, but how about you? Okay, I had um, two, which are really big lessons for me. The first was um, between 2007 and 2008. Um, I had some problems with gymnasts, parents and um, the federation and at the end I had to start with a new generation and this was not my plan. I want to continue the work with the um, generation before but um, at the end they changed it and we had a new start. Uh, today everything is okay. If we didn't um, have this new start, we wouldn't have gymnasts like Tabea Alt or Emily Petz or Karina Krell. Yeah. A lot of these uh, girls may, made the team now. But um, the plan was different and um, I learned a lot from this time. I learned that it's not something between gymnast and coach, it's something between gymnasts parents, federation, coach, and everybody of these um, have to do their things and they have to do it properly. So the teacher has to teach, the coach has to coach, yeah. and the parents have to be parents. And we all have the same goal. It's um, to bring the gymnasts on a high level and if we don't work together, if only one part of these is working in a different way, we get problems. Mm. And the way it happens was not okay for me and I don't want to have it again. Yeah. But I learned so much that I'm 100% sure that it will never happen again. Mm. So this was 2008 and then it's something what happens often and I had it in the, the last two years, um, too often, mm -hmm. it's even a, a, a gymnast has a surgery or something what challenges him or makes problems. Um, you go to competition and you are um, prepared, but you know there are some problems. Yeah. And um, you decide to try it. And at the end, the, um, the gymnast cannot reach his goal. And today I'm 100% sure that I will never go to a competition when I'm not sure that the gymnast can reach the level um, what is good for him yep. or for the competition. And um, this is too much pain for everybody and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to go somewhere if you are um, part gymnast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be of, on the full... Um, yeah, your maximum yeah, level or their maximum, maximum level, level of performance yes, they can do. Yes, and well prepared. 
if you have doubts yeah. or if you um, say, okay, I try it, but the result will be 60% mm. and not 100%. You can make mistakes when you're well prepared. No problem. It happened. Um, we have to work harder or we have to change something. But if you work hard, if you give everything, but it's not possible, yeah. then it doesn't make sense to compete. Better let her stay at home, prepare her well, go with her to the competition when she's well prepared. This doesn't mean I do lower level, lower programs, um, not everything. You can, you can um, break it down to the level she can compete, but don't dream and go with a gymnast somewhere where she's not um, prepared. Yeah, yeah. Just keep the competitions appropriate for the stage yes. they're at. Yes. And then you have to um, bring your own ego back. Mm -hmm. Okay, imagine you have a gymnast, you can think about a participation at the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and you want to go there. You want to be also as a coach and you want that the gymnast goes there. Makes it sense if you bring her there and she will be very um, frustrated when she comes back. She quits immediately because it was the worst um, thing. What happened? She had a bad uh, competition. No, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Not for me. Maybe the Olympics are a little bit different, but let's talk about worlds or Europeans or bigger international competitions. Um, best thing is to get be healthy, happy, well prepared and then you will have a perfect competition and you feel good. Mm. So you talk about the importance of self-esteem and confidence for these, for these girls or athletes that are training. We spoke about this I think a little bit earlier or, or perhaps mm. yesterday. You mentioned that it's so important for you that, that the athlete have got a high level of self-esteem, a high level of self-confidence in themselves and that's one of the most important things for you, isn't it? Is to make sure yes. that they, they don't lose that. Yes, it's something about experience. I think if, if you have seen different gymnasts in different um, situations competing or doing their preparation, um, you can see how important it is when they have um, joy, when they have passion, when they have everything they need to be happy and mm. then at the end they, are, they can be happy with the result even if it's not good because um, they tried it, they tried it very hard and okay, it's, it doesn't work, we made a mistake, normal, human, so we tried again and with maybe more passion and we, we reach our mm. goals. What do you find difficult about coaching in general? Is there anything that really frustrates you about, about being a coach or that, oh. you would, that you could change if you could? <laughs> if I'm such an emotional person <laughs> and it's challenging. It challenges me every day. It challenges um, your own yes, emotions? Yes, oh, sometimes I think, okay, um, why is it working today and not tomorrow and not yesterday? And, now she, ha she was sick for one week and she lost everything and this is always the, the first thing and then okay I do my run maybe in lunchtime I do my run and then I think okay go back think about everything it's normal yeah um, you have good days you have bad days you have um, you have fun in something, you, sometimes it's boring, um, the girl can have an, a different problem, maybe she has stress at home, at school or some way, somewhere and um, then we start again and then we go slowly, yeah. the process, yes. So just taking time to reflect. So yeah. for the audience's benefit, obviously you run every single day, sometimes twice a day. Yeah. For a, for a long time. For a long time and it's yeah. the only way to stay long time, my opinion. Yes. Um, as a coach in a gym, it's my 
personal way to come down to reflect everything. I think I did one million routines. I counted one million D scores and <laughs> E scores and I um, made one million plans. I made my personal strategy to yeah. how, how to coach um, things with um, different gymnasts and um, Sometimes I have a, a discussion with the gymnast and it's a, I speak with her and I know exactly what is the plan. This is, this discussion will never happen, but and in, in reality, but running. in my head, it's, everything is done and okay, I'm clear. I go to the yeah. gym and, and it helps you it's my be, plan. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> my daily plan, yes. Your daily plan, I like yeah. it, yeah. yeah. So the, the emotional side is challenging. Anything else that you find particularly difficult? Apart from I know that um, okay. trying to find a holiday is, uh, is very uh, difficult is the, for you. Yes. Um, when I started um, being coach, it was um, different that gymnastics never happen and uh, never stops. You have 24 hours um, uh, around, everything is around gymnastics. You cannot go home and say, okay, my job is done. Yep. I go early in the morning in the gym. I start at seven o'clock. I um, Even if I drive by car, my first thoughts are, okay, my warm up, um, we have a plan a weekly, but how can I exactly um, do it? Then you go into the gym, then you have, you get problems with, with some gymnasts, then you think about this. When you have little gymnasts, you have a telephone call with the mom or the dad. You have to organize things from school and then in the second session the same and at the end you go home and you um, try to discuss everything um, with your partner or whatever and you go to bed, you want to sleep and you have something about gymnastics. So 24 hours. Um, a big challenge. Um, I don't think that I dream from gymnastics, but sometimes it happens. Mm. Then no, I, need more run. <laughs> I need more run. I need more Okay, this is this was um, what was really um, hard for me at the beginning, and um, today. Ooh, I'm not sure if this is something for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can I can handle it. Yeah. Yes. And you have to know that I'm. I don't know if everybody knows it, but I my partner is also coaching, and mm. we are together. And this is something I really enjoy, because um, first I thought maybe it's hard if you do everything together, but um, I think. The one of us is the calm part, and one of us is the more busy part. <laughs> and less calm. <laughs> less <laughs> calm, yes. And we regulate each other, and this is the perfect thing for the gymnasts. So if they have enough from me, they yeah. can go to yeah. Robbie or Elena or somebody else sure. in the gym, yes. If you have a team. Yes. I really like that way of describing it, that you regulate each other. It's, yes, and uh, it's a trust between you that you're able to do that. Isn't yes, it? So and one thing I want to share mm. with your com community, um, this is um, something very special. Um, when you coach together with, with somebody you know very well, it's, you don't have to talk. Sometimes we replace us, I'm on bars, so, um, Robbie is on floor and we walk between um, the groups mm -hmm. and we don't have to um, talk about what we do. We know exactly what is, what, what is the next and this makes it easy. Yeah. So you're basically you're in harmony with each other yes. whilst you're Sometimes coaching. the gymnast said, ah, Robbie said me this two minutes before. <laughs> oh, ah, yeah. yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you're in the same frequency. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you've, we've talked then about um, some of the challenges, of course, but you mentioned before how passionate you are, how the athlete is your motivation. So mm -hmm. I guess that is how you cope with those challenges, that your coping mechanism mm -hmm. is your running as well, your form of meditation. Um, in terms of the athlete, you know, you've seen a, a lot of athletes come through your program, and, and many, as we've mentioned, to 
international success at the highest level. What are some of the common factors, some of the common qualities of the athletes that you see that make it versus mm -hmm. the ones that mm -hmm. maybe don't quite get there to the mm -hmm. very, very top? Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit hard to explain. It's for sure it's talent, yeah. but talent is not um, not only one thing. It's a lot of mm -hmm. parts, but um, if you compare maybe the three, one of the three best gymnasts in the Stuttgart gym, it's Tabea Alt, it's Elisabeth Seitz, and it's um, Kim Bui. Mm -hmm. And you take, for example, Emily Petz, you have four completely different um, personalities, but everybody has the passion, the yep. pas passion in a different way. Um, for example, uh, Elizabeth, she's an absolutely uh, a showgirl. She mm. likes performing. She likes, um, if you give her one person on the stands, she will show you everything. She's 100% in the competition. She loves competing. She's excited. She can show that she's excited. And she has, um, I call it killer instinct. She goes out and bam, her routine is exactly where she yeah. can be. Even if she's not well prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all seen <laughs> um, that with Belly. She's, yes. uh, she's reliable. <laughs> but um, always nice to see. And she, she yeah. can, everything she has, she can give it out. Then we have, for example, Kim Bui. She's a, one of the hardest working gymnasts I've ever met. Mm -hmm. She's um, always in the gym. She makes every day her program. She's um, solid and um, she has obsession. She wants to work. She works hard and you get in competition everything she worked for. Mm -hmm. So if she's good in her training, she will be good in competition. If it's not good in training, um, you cannot be sure that she gets it in competitions. But um, with her volume, she's able to give you the security, the team. She can help always the team because you know, when she goes to the apparatus, you will have no mistake. Yeah. This is Kim. Tabea was, um, how can I explain? She's, um, she wants to do it in a perfect way. Mm. And um, she's upset, obsessed, obsessed from sure. doing it perfect. Yeah. Um, she works on details and mentally she's always prepared. She, she's, she, when she was baby gym, she was very <coughs> when she went into competition, but at competition she can um, be better yeah. than in her training. She's always, um, she tries always hard and um, gets, m most times she gets good results. This is Tabea. Emily has everything mm. a little bit not perfect she yeah. has she's not so experienced at the moment but um she has the heart on the right place she wants to be good and she can develop and i'm 100 percent sure that she can um, show her beauty one day when she um learns a little bit more yeah. how to behave and her potential mm. yeah when you're faced with an athlete that is talented talented, whatever that means, mm -hmm. um, but maybe doesn't have the killer instinct, doesn't have per perfectionism, doesn't show you the passion. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Because a lot Ooh. of coaches that really yeah. struggle, it's particularly for less experienced coaches that are, yeah. and I mean this respectfully, they're desperate for success, they're desperate for the opportunity to go to those higher levels. Mm -hmm. And they see this talented athlete as being their ticket to get there. Mm -hmm. But actually, I mean, what do you, what do, you do with that? Because that, for me, creates um, a lot of problems. You want to know what I do when, I, when the athlete has, has... Has the talent, but not these other qualities that you've mentioned, okay. which you believe hmm. are, are critical. This is an interesting question. 
I don't know. Maybe it's the environment what makes her yeah. more excited. Maybe I, I trust her. I show her that I trust her. And I try to um, figure out what is the specific thing from this gymnast. What makes you special? Mm. I have one. She's not the highest, the biggest talent, but special with her is that she can stick beam. Mm -hmm. So you are amazing because you can stick beam. Now it's your thing to stick beam and everybody will say, okay, this gymnast, she can always stick beam. You wake her up at three o'clock in the night and she can stick beam. Yeah. So perfect. And then she can build up her self-confidence mm -hmm. and Next competition, maybe she goes into the competition and she feels, oh, I'm the one yeah. and she can, I can stick beam. So maybe I can do very good spins on floor. Yeah. You are the spinning queen. This is maybe a way, but mm. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm, I don't have a, a plan how to build up yeah. more um, self-confidence. I see the person yes. and then I try to find it out. Yeah, because we, it might often be seen as a, uh, a motivation thing, you know, this athlete is not motivated, but whose job is it? No. Is it the no. coach's job no. or the athlete's job? Absolutely not. Um, when we speak with the gymnasts yeah. uh, which, uh, who, which want to come to Stuttgart, mm. we tell them we are not the ones who have to motivate you. First thing is here on your um, face stays, I want to work, I want to get better. You will never hear from us, um, you have to do it, you have to do it, do this more, do this more, if you don't do the if sentence, I hate it, if you don't do this, yeah. you will not do this. Um, here must stand, I want, because I want, yes. I get better. Yeah. We we can only help the gymnasts if they don't come with a high self-motivation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And if you go into gymnastics, um, you must be sure that you want it, you love it. Um, it's such a hard sport. It's, it gives you no money. <laughs> you have to work like a, like a, I don't know the word, Bauarbeiter, somebody <laughs> who works to build yeah. a house. Um, you you um, stay there, you hold, you hold um, youth, yes. maybe the first time from the adult um, age. So you lose a lot of time, what is really funny. Mm. Um, then it doesn't make sense if you don't have a, a big self-motivation. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not passionate about it, it's a hard, it's a hard road. Yes. And it's not one worth traveling on, basically. Yes. Yeah. But I had not one gymnast who um, came into the gym and said, okay, yeah. help me. Um, I, I, I don't know what I can do. Uh, and I don't want, I really don't want, my parents want that I mm. do this. No. Are your standards higher than other coaches, do you think? Because My standards are high, but I don't know if they're higher. Mm. So for <laughs> I the, hope they are higher. So for the average coach, I mean, you're, you're a coach at international level, as, as we've mentioned, your mm -hmm. whole career, mm -hmm. or the majority of your career has been about uh, participation and success at mm -hmm. European world you mm -hmm. know, and Olympic level. So I want to win. I always want to win. Okay. This is a big motivation uh -huh. for me. I hate being Second, okay, it's okay if your athlete uh, did the best when others are better. Yeah. Um, okay, then I take silver or bronze. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but it the, these um, I've very often been at competitions where my gymnast placed fifteenth, sixteenth, and all, always when I came home, I thought, okay. Now, we have to work harder, we have to be smarter, we have to think about our system. And it's not the athlete who has to change. It's me. I have to find an, another way. I'm 
more smart. I'm, I yeah. know I have to give the new way. Maybe we, we, we made some mistakes. Mm. Why are the others better? So rise up in everything. Your personal standard, um, your technical thinking, you um, try to make the mindset from the gymnasts better. It's mm -hmm. always, um, I, I want to get always higher than I was. Yeah. yeah, so it's learning from those that are winning and then reflecting on what you can do better. So I call it the standards gap. Yeah. So if you've got a world-class standard and we've got wherever you are, and then there's the gap in the middle. That's what I call the standards, the standards gap. It's, it's raising your standards in order to achieve what world-class world is whatever that benchmark might be. Yes, and I, I, um, I'm happy when I see there are some better ones. Yeah. It, makes, it, ma it motivates me. It's, mm -hmm. it, and in no time I come back from um, big competitions and I think, oh, yo, what can I do? I don't know. They are so good and we are so bad. It's not demotivating for me. No. You. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Okay, I'd like to be better. Yeah. But um, it's only me and um, the stuff from Stuttgart, we can change it, mm -hmm. we can get better. It's not, oh, we are so bad. Yeah. It doesn't come from outside. <laughs> you have to help yourself. That's a really important uh, lesson. You have to help yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you have for coaches that want to follow in your footsteps? Maybe just two or three kind of quick things. Let's take an 18 year old coach. It's, it's Guti back when uh, in 97. Yes. You know? Take your own group. Okay. Start. Um, take your own group, have a mentor, mm -hmm. and travel around, see as much as possible. See other coaches working, um, compare, um, Try to pick the best things out from every system and find and create your own system in your own environment. Um, it's not a big thing to stay somewhere, look always the same thing. You yeah. are perfect in, in copying something. But pick the um, grapes, rosines, yeah. what yeah. is it? Pick the grapes. From the grapes from every thing. Mm. and make the perfect system for you yeah. so it gets perfect nice Guti thank you very much for spending time with me <laughs> I appreciate it Yay. I want to uh, congratulate you on all your results uh, I see you as a personal mentor because I have the pleasure of being able to spend a lot of time with you every year either at the training camps or when I'm consulting with you in Stuttgart um, and it's just such a pleasure to be uh, in your company here this week but also spending time in your club because I always have a lot of fun with your athletes. Um, your philosophies, Robbie's philosophies, you know, they rub off on the, on the athletes and you've done such a good job at developing the person as well as the gymnast. And it's just a, a privilege to be able to spend time with you. So thank you very much for all you've done for me. And uh, I wish you the, uh, all the success, of course, continuing moving forward. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.